So if you had to guess how much P has to be unloaded from a B-2 bomber after one of its famous globe-spanning missions, what would you guess? Well, the answer, it turns out, is about 100 pounds worth. Well, technically 100 pounds of P mixed with a kitty litter-like substance that's used to turn fluids into a gel that's less likely to leak around the cockpit. And we know that thanks to retired Air Force Colonel Mel Dial, who flew a record-setting 44-hour and 20-minute combat mission to Afghanistan back in October of 2001. You see, despite its huge 179-foot wingspan and the ability to carry payloads larger than 60,000 pounds, the B-2 is not a particularly cozy place for its two-pilot crew to spend upwards of days at a time. There may be plenty of room for bombs in the back, but in the cockpit, the only respite from the two pilot seats is a small modified army cot and a single chemical toilet that B-2 crews are quick to point out does not have enough storage space for a long-duration missions worth of number ones and number twos. So that toilet tends to be reserved for solids, and when either crew member needs to pee, they resort to small plastic bags filled with an absorbent material that are commonly called piddle packs. These specially designed vinyl bags come in a few different varieties, but they all effectively work the same way, with a wide bottom filled with either moisture absorbent granules or a sponge a tapered neck, and then a fairly wide opening at the top that seals a lot like a Ziploc bag. And B-2 crews, who are known to fly the longest-duration bomber missions, often departing from Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, flying all the way to target locations over the Middle East, and then flying all the way back without ever touching the ground once, well, they carry a lot of piddle packs with them. During normal flight, the B-2 can be operated by just a single pilot, but during takeoff, air-to-air -air refueling, weapons employment, and landing, both pilots need to be alert and at the stick. And that can be very detrimental to a pilot's ability to stay alert and capable for 40-plus hours at a time. With most standard payloads, a B-2 may need to refuel from a tanker every four to six hours, meaning you've got about that long in between refueling intervals to get some rest. But in missions like Operation Midnight Hammer earlier this year, with B-2s packed to the gills with 60,000 pounds worth of bunker-busting munitions, they may need to refuel as frequently as just every few hours. And because of the length of these missions, it's pretty common for target sets to change after you depart, meaning one of those two pilots needs to reprogram the mission computers and the guidance systems in each of those individual weapons for new target sets. Navigation, communications, electronic warfare, and weapons employment, all jobs traditionally done by other bomber crew members in jets like the B-52 or B-1B, all have to be done by one of the pilots while the other manages the aircraft. So suffice to say, that means there isn't often much opportunity for rest, even on a 44-plus hour mission. And as a result, pilots are often issued go pills or amphetamines to keep them awake and alert when they need to be, which comes with a directive to drink plenty of fluids to make sure that they can keep operating at a high level. Now, B-2 pilots tend to eat light the day before a long mission to limit the number of bombs that they need to drop off themselves in the chemical toilet. But if they're staying properly hydrated, they usually fill somewhere in the neighborhood of two piddle packs apiece every hour they spend in flight. Now, in truth, the B-2's endurance is really only limited by that human factor. After that record-setting 44.3-hour mission back in 2001, Diel and his co-pilot landed in Diego Garcia and left the engines running while offloading their 100 pounds worth of piddle packs and having the chemical toilet refreshed so a new crew could climb into the same cockpit and fly that same jet all the way back to the United States. All told, that B-2, known as the Spirit of America, as well as six others, all had their engines running for more than 70 straight hours across two crews each during that mission, which is sure to have been a driving factor in the B-21 Raider being designed as an optionally manned bomber that can operate without any crew on board at all, saving you, you know, at least 100 pounds worth of piddle pack space.